Hi there. Over the next few weeks I want to talk about some of my old match fishing experiences. I match fished for over 40 years. I've match fished now for about a decade and I've fished many many matches on uh, all sorts of waters in England and I'm going to cover different topics. My early days on as a club angler, uh, as a youngster, team fishing, winter leagues, open matches, nationals, uh, watching matches and some of the experiences with uh, the teams that I was involved with. So there's lots of things to talk about, uh, all sorts of funny things that happened along the way in different matches, uh, some of the darker side of match fishing occasionally and uh, some of the failures plenty of successes fortunately. I was never the best match angler in the world by a very long way. On the lower of averages I did far better than would be expected uh, to the tune of five or six times better than the lower of averages would suggest. All that means is I was probably better than the people I was fishing against who weren't necessarily the top anglers. Dorset's a bit of a backwater as far as match fishing is concerned and that, although there have always been a, one or two decent anglers it's nothing like the really top circuits that there used to be years ago in the uh, Midlands and the North and even on parts of the Thames and places like that but I did come across some very good anglers. Let's go back to the beginning. My very first match was in 1969 and believe it or not it was an open match. I was just 12 and for many years from the 1920s onwards the North Oxford Angling Society which still exists to this day would run an annual children's match for uh, youngsters. I don't think there was a minimum age probably six or seven um, up to the age of 14 and I used to stay in Oxford every year in the summer with relatives and fish on the Thames around Medley and so when I was 12 like I say I entered this match you just went to the local tackle shop and uh, bought a ticket which wasn't very much and it was a two and a half hour match on the Thames at Medley although size limits were in uh, ruled in those days that you've had to fish to size limits this children's match, they totally ignored size limits. You could just weigh in everything you caught. And back then, most of the fish that youngsters caught from the Thames were bleak and gudgeon. If you fished off the bottom, you caught bleak. And as soon as you went hard on the bottom, you caught gudgeon. And you might get the odd dace and even if you were very lucky, a, a roach, small roach or perch or a little tiny chub. But it was by and large, it was bleak and gudgeon. And that match with... 200 youngsters assembled, lots of parents turning up and uh, club members to assist, keep an eye on things. Very, very tight pegging with 200, probably on um, five yard pegs if that. You were given your allotted swim, off you went. Uh, I noticed a few things <laughs> immediately. First of all, although the match didn't start till a certain time, I, I don't know, it was about two o'clock, only a two and a half hour match. It's quite a lot of the kids, as soon as they got to their swim, started fishing. They didn't wait for the whistle, they just started to fish. I thought this was a bit odd. Anyway, don't worry about that too much. And uh, I only had a five foot fiberglass rod. And match fishing to me in these early days was just fish. Catch what you could catch. There were no tactics or anything like that. I'd bought a very small amount of maggots, probably six pence worth or something like that, which is in the old D's not peas, so two and a half P in today's money. And I just had a few maggots there and I pulled out about 50 bleak and gudgeon, which weighed a fantastic one pound, three ounces. And the great thing about this match was that loads and loads of people, including the club, donated prizes, the tackle shops donated prizes. So there were loads and loads and loads of prizes. Uh, I don't know what won the match, probably only a couple of pounds, but I was well down the prize list and I I got my very first 
bait box, which was a tiny little bait box, a little, little tiny one about this big, sort of half pint bait box, which I thought was fantastic. And I liked it, I enjoyed that match, but living as I did in Wareham, I wasn't in any fishing club then, that was it for that season. And, and as the season went on, I got a bit better at catching fish. I got a slightly longer rod, a seven foot spinning rod, really flying now from Woolworths. And the following year, I, thanks to a couple of mates, I joined Wareham and District Angling Society who had club matches on the River Froome and Breach Pond. And not long after I joined, uh, I think I joined about the start of July sometime. I went and fished Breach and places like that. But they had a match on the river at Eastmore, which is just upstream of the Wareham, main bridge in Wareham and downstream of where the bypass bridge is now. Of course, there was no bypass in those days, but it, it was sort of three quarters of a mile of river there. And off I cycled to the draw at Stobra on a very, very foggy morning. It was very early in the morning. I can't remember whether we fished draw at seven and fish eight to one or something like that. But very thick fog. You could barely see across the river. So off I went across these meadows onto what to me was a huge river, though I'd fished the Thames, which was big. But I was used to fishing the tiny river Piddle. And I couldn't, with, with this little fishing rod, uh, even with a seven foot fishing rod, didn't really know what on earth I was doing and I messed around in the edges pretty much the first time I'd ever fished the Froome to be honest and I think I vaguely remember catching three or four little days but after a little while I, uh, as the sun came up and it became clear it was a hot boiling hot day in uh, probably late July I went and watched one of the senior anglers a guy called Kenny Anderson lovely bloke who was quite happy to show me what he was doing. And he was fishing with a 13 foot match rod and trotting in about six or seven foot of water and picking up the odd little dace, little roach, nothing very much. And uh, I think the match was pretty hard. It's only one with a, a roach of about a pound. And I think Kenny probably had about 10 or 12 ounces, but I thought, well, this is all right. You just try your best and you learn. And I was, because I learned, I think match fishing for me was a, a learning experience. Not long after that, we had the annual junior match on breach. It was about eight or nine people turned up. I, I doubt if Wareham Club's got nine juniors in these days. But there were loads of youngsters in those days who fished. Of course, I'm only 13, and some of these youngsters were 14 or 15. And the drill on breach in those days was catching very small roach. They, they were four inches long sometimes even smaller, very rarely much bigger than that. If you caught one about seven inches, it was a monster, very stunted, with even tinier gudgeon. The gudgeon were about three inches long. So basically you fished off the bottom, very deep there, but fishing close in. And then eventually you, you'd fish about four foot deep, catching a little roach, and then eventually go down onto the bottom, catch a few gudgeon. And I'd I think less than a pound off one of the shallower swims and about two and a half pounds on it. And again, this was quite interesting, quite exciting. And I had no tactics except fish, for, catch fish, just catch fish. Don't worry about trying to catch a big fish to win or catching fast. Just concentrate on getting a few bites and see how I got on. Later that year, I fished one, I think I fished another match on there. Uh, fished on the river a little bit. And we came up to the Christmas match. Now, I used to go along with a mate of mine to the uh, committee meetings. I wasn't on the committee, but anyone who wasn't on the committee could attend. So he just sat quiet out of the way. And I used to hear all the moans about youngsters fishing places they shouldn't, which probably meant me and my mates. We were fishing waters. We were meant to be accompanied by a senior. We were 13. We didn't worry about little minor technicalities like that. Anyway, they were discussing the Christmas match on the River Froome down below Wareham. And whereas now you'd go down there and find all these moorings and hardly fish it. But back then, you could fish both banks below the bridge and lots of swims 
and there were lots and lots of flounders in the river which I'd been catching in the couple of weeks before that ledgering worms and I knew that little tiny uh, harbour rag which are very small they're, they're not much bigger than a red worm really were deadly for these flounders not that I actually had them but I knew they were, really worked anyway the previous year in the Christmas match about two people had caught fish I think it must have been a frost or something like that and they said oh this year we'll count flounders whereas normally it was just coarse fish so just basically dace maybe a roach or two but nearly all dace on the froom on that stretch further up river there were grayling and bigger roach but on there it was dace lots of small dace now although i'd fished the froom a little bit my experience on dace fishing was pretty poor i'd caught a fair few out of the piddle but the, the froom was quite daunting it's tidal you needed to fish a fair way out you needed to fish uh, feed consistently to get the shoals of dace feed in you need to fish a lot better than I could do with a seven foot rod found a fishing I just had a little coffin lead weighing about um, three eighths of an ounce quarter of an ounce a size 10 hook and a worm and with my little spinning rod I could cast right across the river which you could do then because like so far fewer, fewer moorings anyway after at the end of the committee meeting I went and asked the, the chairman I said are we allowed to use ragworm at, as bait and he looked at me a little bit funny I'm better money just sort of dealing with a 13 year old kid he said yeah there's no rules against that and I said, do what you like you know okay anyway the day before the match my mate then was Roger said that his parents were going Christmas shopping in pool and they could drop me and Roger off at Hamworthy which is on the edge of Pool Harbour with a fork and a, a, a bait a bucket for an hour and a half and we could dig some bait the tide was nice and low which was perfect well they did their shopping and then they came and picked us up later this was ideal so we dug about I don't know 50 or 60 of these little tiny harbour rag also had some garden worms that we dug out of the garden and we turned up on the match and I started ledgering with little rag worms I had the best swims then were up by the bridge but they didn't peg those they were sort of opposite the quay and opposite the granary for the flounders we were further down I was uh, just above the bend and Roger was right down the bottom and know now that these were good day swims and the guy on the next swim to me a guy called Mike Fry was um, fishing with maggots trotting happily away catching small dace and I started to catch a few flounders and I was quite happy again on catching fish and I saw him catching all these days so I I broke my tackle down and got the one rod and tried trotting with I did have some maggots but that was no good. I hadn't fed the swim or anything like that. So I went back to my, my um, flounder fishing. And at the end of the match, I'd had 25 flounders for just over five pounds. Now Mike won the match with over seven pounds, which was not a bad weight on the day. And there were some other weights of over five pounds and six pounds. And I ended up fifth. I wasn't very popular. <laughs> <laughs> what's that kid doing with them flounders Woo, mutter 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 and of course being a Christmas match there were lots of prizes and I, I think I won a tin of biscuits or something like that which was very nice but to come fifth in a senior match when you're only 13 is a tremendous boost to your confidence uh, Roger didn't do so well he had about a pound and a bit which was well down the field but he got a little prize I don't know um, don't know what he got but he got something for it I, I think at that point they sort of vowed not to um, count flounders again or not in a hurry they may have counted many years later but uh, there you are and towards the end of the season I fished a match on on Besswold I caught a few days that was a pretty hard very cold day so that first season I, I'd got a taste for it but only the one real success in the Christmas match 
the following year started to get a feel for breach, understanding what sort of floats might be better, what hooks, getting the right hooks to nylon. Uh, fairly, bear in mind we're fishing for these little ropes, so uh, a size 20. Starting to notice that the seniors, a lot of them, they were really river anglers and, and river fishing in Wareham meant basically trotting with a 5BB float for the older ones. That might be a porcupine quill. The younger anglers in their sort of 20s who were quite reasonably skillful would use sort of balsa floats shotted down and just regular feeding and uh, might use a smaller hook, an 18 or maybe a 16. The older anglers invariably used a, a 16 or even a 14 for the days. But I'm starting to think, well, there's no rule says I can't use a 20. If I get more bites, especially on breach, we're fishing for these little fish, that's an advantage. And this time in the junior match, I, I was far better than the year before. I had a better rod, better hooks, got the float shotted down. And I actually won the junior match with one pound 11 of these little roach. And the second weight was uh, only about seven ounces, which was my mate Phil, who started to, he joined the club that year when he was 14. And we match fished together for many years. So that year started to get some better results. Not still really um, gaining skills and trying to concentrate on just catching fish. No tactics at all, it's just float fishing. I don't think, apart from me ledgering for the flounders and Roger ledgering for the flounders, no one ever ledgered. There was no swing tips, no quiver tips. It was just float fishing that that was the long and the short of it everyone float fish regardless of venue almost always with maggots I, I don't even remember anyone fishing bread anywhere in the matches then caught a few fish on Eastmore uh, still yet to really make any grounds on the Froome above Wareham which was uh, known as the top water or home lane did get a few days up there in matches but no, nothing very much to to write home about the following season was my last as a as a junior and I started to do a little bit better won the junior match again still with only a couple of pounds and I think Phil was second again second year running did a bit better in one or two other matches and one of the matches was a senior match where it was only one with one pound two and I was stood in the water with a, a very much a makeshift keep net because keep nets then were gudgeon mesh when you got no money to buy a good minnow mesh net and they were horrible uh, knotted things then I had a sort of makeshift keep net made of um, curtain material to keep these tiny roach, otherwise some of them just swam straight out through the gudgeon mesh. They were so small, the tiny gudgeon and roach. And I managed to miss the net with a roach of about five ounces, which absolute whopper for breach back then. And me and Phil both had 14 and a half ounces, and the guy who was really the club champion, a guy called Dave Barnes, had one pound two. And I'm thinking, I've come close to winning a senior match here. I've come second equal, so I'm scoring points in the, the senior points. Another match, I was third in the uh, in the um, points as a sen that's senior points. So though I was fishing in a junior section in the thing, my weight would count in the senior points. I wouldn't get the senior prizes, didn't do the senior pools or senior entry fees. I'm starting to think, well, I'm not too bad here, do doing okay. And at the end of the season, I'd ended up fifth overall in the senior points. A um, friend of mine, Godfrey, one of the four of us youngsters who were making our way, the, the other one was Richard, and of course Phil. He'd come sixth. I think Richard had come eighth and Phil might have been tenth, something like that, or maybe the other way around. Godfrey had really only got into fishing that year and had an absolute dream draw on the John Emery catching uh, 16 pounds a day and that was after someone had lent their rod and reel to him I think 17 pounds one of 15 pounds was third 
I just couldn't get the draws on that match for, for years and years and years. But um, I think we were starting to shake up the seniors. Bear in mind, we're only 15 year olds. We're not being coached by top anglers or anything like that. We're, me and Phil were reading all we could from Ivan Marks, but it didn't really make much sense to us. We had no experience of the waters. He was talking about like the Trent and the Witham and the Welland and the Neen and the Seven. But we were noticing about the, the shotting patterns, the floats and so on. So we were developing our methods. We were starting to think about what uh, float sensitivity on breach for these little tiny ropes that instead of a thick float, a very small tip dotted down would show the bites better. And we were starting to be able to fish the froom more. There was, there was one match on the froom on the towpath when there's still 15 there in which it fished very well. It had a, a perfect tide, perfect conditions, no wind all day, lovely tinge of colour. And I was right down the bottom end, almost by the yacht club, had nine pounds of small dace and roach. And I came, I think, sixth equal, and only 12 pound won it, but it was a very tight match. But I thought, I'm not that far off the better club anglers, really. With the sort of benefit of the experience that uh, got later on, I would have won it easily. Phil had about five pounds, I think. I don't think Richard and Godfrey did very well. And he was sort of 12th or 13th. But it was a, a foretaste that we were getting better and we were fishing the towpath a lot, pleasure fishing and getting better together. And we got to our last ever match as juniors on the towpath on a, a day when all the big dace had moved upstream of the bridge. So what was left was lots of little dace like this. And it was a day when the tide went out and out and out until there was virtually no water left. And Phil drew next to Dave Barnes, who was Phil still only 15. I turned 16, but I was still fishing as a junior for that end of that season. It's in March. And Phil drew next to Dave Barnes. And Phil beat him with over six pounds to six pounds. I was next to Jimmy Lee, who just beat me. We both had over five pounds. If Phil was first, I was fourth. And I thought, we're serving notice on these guys. We're seniors next year. We're, we're we're on our way up, we're coming on, and Richard, like I say, was another angler with plenty of potential. So that's the end of the story as far as being a, a youngster was concerned. Very wet behind the ears, very green, but we were catching fish and that's what match fishing was all about. So until next time, uh, goodbye for now and uh, I'll see you soon.